your people. Good morning, good morning. Come on in. Good morning, good morning. Come on in, everybody. Yes, come, let's praise the Lord. Hey, come, let's praise the Lord. He is Jehovah. Come on in, praise God. Good morning, welcome. Hey, what a wonderful day it is. What a wonderful time it is in the kingdom of God. Come on in. Hey. Come, let's praise the Lord. Yes. Hallelujah. Oh, come on in and be excited. Hey. Yes. Good morning, Zoomers. Of his grace. Hey. Praise the I'm so excited. Yes, God is doing some amazing things through you and I right now in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hey, yes, come, let's praise the Lord. Woo. Come, let's praise the Lord. Yes, come on, come on, let's do it. Let's praise Him. Good morning, Vanessa Robinson. Good morning, Pastor William Lamont. Dr. Aqua Copeland. Good morning, girl. Pastor John Bowler. Let's go. Hey, Sonia Wilson. Good morning, Pamela Former Matthews. Good morning, Vandalia Hayes. Good morning, Pastor Shirley Donald Johnson. Dr. Noreen, what's up? You got to tell me about convocation. Angeline Nelson, come on in. Arthur Jackson. Let's go, Pastor John Joe Davis. Wendy Atkins, Louise Heights. Good morning. Hey, good morning, Evangelist Akiva. <laughs> you always encourage. Let's get our IG family in. Of salvation. Yes, come on in. We are excited about it. Hey. Come, let's praise the Lord. Yes, come on in. He is Jehovah. He is El Shaddai. Yes. Yes. Join us. Join us. Praise the Lord. Hey. Yes. Praise him in the sanctuary. That's wherever you are right now, right? Yes. Come on in. Hey. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Come on in. Yes. Praise him. Praise him. Whoa. Praise him. Come on. This is the school of the Holy Spirit. We praise him. Come on. Hey. Yes. Yes. Woo. Good morning, free conference call. We're glad to have you. Good morning, Zoomers. Yes. That's me to be. Let's go. Would you all like to and share? Share on your pages right quickly for me. Of the goodness of Jesus. Hey, Ruthie, my baby. Done for me. Hey. My soul cries out. Hallelujah. Praise God for saving me. Hey, Sister Tanny Randy, what's up? LaShawn, good morning, good morning. Praise him. Mama B, good morning. That's the Neosha Schneck, good morning. Good morning to you and your precious husband. Hey, this is how we wake up. Girl, folks, good morning. This is how we do it. This is how we get up. This is how we get going. Let's go. Hey. We love to praise him. Like, tag, and share. Come on. Dr. Keone did work. Good morning. Good morning, Rhonda Dooley. Y'all coming up the sign like so nice. Mary Milton Spencer, good morning. Hey. Yes. Good morning, Jarena. Good morning, Anisha. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Hey, say good morning to me so that we can see your 
your name. Hey, good morning, Veronica West Bauer. I got some work for you. <laughs> ah, yes, Steph Jones, June, good morning. Geraldine, Dr. Patricia Davis, good morning. Good morning, Overseer Ryan, Dr. Barbara Etheridge, and Steve. Good morning, beautiful Bishop. Bishop Celestin Todd, Regina Adams, yes. Hey, Beatrice Anderson Smith, we're going deep this week. We're going deep. Get them on. Hey. Hold it. <laughs> Hold it. Hold that note. <laughs> Hold that note. Come on in, Angie B. God bless you. Let's go deep, Pastor Vanessa. Good morning. Hey, Bishop, your grace. Bishop Bell, good morning. God bless you. God bless you in the name of Jesus. Amen. God bless you, sir. Amen. Adrian Lawrence, let's go. We're going deep this morning. We're so glad for our IG family. Good morning. As you are coming in, this is the day that the Lord has made, and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. I'm telling you this morning, Holy Spirit is so sweet. Can you just welcome him this morning? Good morning, Holy Spirit. Good morning, Holy Spirit. Hey, Janard Lakes, Ava Storrs, Alicia K. Hamilton coming up the timeline. Mary Wilson Williams, God bless you. So glad. Hey, Betty Matthews Staggs, praise him. I want a little tag of that just a little bit more. It's so refreshing in the morning to just come on and praise the Lord and be excited. Uh, good morning, prophetess, prophet, pastor, Shirley Maxine Stubbs. Oh my God, good morning. They're in the beautiful Caribbean, Lady Icy. Y'all like, tag, and share, please. Like, tag, and good morning, chaplain. Good morning. Good morning, IG. Good morning, Zoomers. We're coming up. <clears throat> We're coming up. We're doing so much better. Can I thank you for your prayers and your concerns? Get your paper Bible. Get your paper Bible. We are moving in. Good morning, uh, beloved, uh, precious lady Suzette Spence. Oh, my God. Hallelujah. Thank God for your life, daughter. Hey, Wendy, God bless you. Good morning. Gertrude Green, let's go. Hey, Pastor Robert Smith, my brother, my Holy Ghost Baptist brother. <laughs> Sharon Williamson, God bless you. Janice Swiney, Sweeney, or is it Swiney? Tell me which one, one or two. Hey, Denise Curry, Estella Dawson. Good morning, daughter. Good to see you. Come, let's praise. I'm telling you, I'm just in a mood today. I'm just in that mood. I'm just like, let's go. We're moving towards Pentecost. We're, we're moving towards Pentecost. We're getting ourselves in order for a great move of God. We're, 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 we're developing <clears throat> intimacy with Holy Spirit so that we can be in the move of God. That's what this is about, folks. My trusted friend, confidant, Holy Spirit. Oh, my, come on. He'll never change. Yes, yes. Hallelujah. <laughs> That's right, Evangelist, the people. You know I know. Hey, son, all the way from, from Nigeria. Good morning, Pastor Phillips. Jocelyn Stonewall, let's go. Camilla Cook, Gertrude Green. He's moving us to Pentecost. And Pentecost, oh, praise God, me, oh, she. Pentecost is not an event, it's a dispensation. I need y'all to know that, that we are currently living in. We are living in the dispensation of. Pentecost. Spread the news around. Ooh. 
Yes, Pastor Leonard Staples. Good morning. Good morning, Sherry Innocent. Good morning, Pastor Valerie Tillman. Good morning. Good morning. Other Kathy Hawkins, Mary Ann Davis, Bernice Richardson. Good morning. Yes, Mama Pearl, I promise. <laughs> Neil Waller, Cheryl McKenzie Fess. Good morning. Pentecost is a dispensation. It's not just an event. <laughs> Simply say that's great news. Absolutely, LaShawn Michael. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for Pentecost. Martha, Dr. Martha Balls. Hey, come on, Janisha. She said, I'm walking in my healing and not my feelings. Praise God. Hallelujah. Oh, Rabbi Kaskata. Yes, Pentecost is not an event. It's a dispensation. Ah, good morning, Teresa Wallace. Priscilla Spain. Jean Dutton, good morning, darling. Hallelujah. And we are living in the dispensation of the Spirit. Isn't that great? Isn't that wonderful? That we are living in a dispensation that Jesus promised uh, would bring. You know, I think about this uh, when the scripture says, and these works that I do, shall you do also. You think about those words. But greater works. Wow. Greater works. Good morning, Teresa Wallace. Good morning. If you're from Shook, let me know you're coming in from Shook. Thank you. Thank you so much. Come on. If you're coming in from the Shook Conference, thank you, Teresa Wallace. Thank you. Sean, amen. We're living. Do you ever think about that? Hey, my sweet Sean the Hill evangelist. Good morning, Dina Moss Moten, Carolyn White. Pentecost is a dispensation. Oh, that's good, LaShawn. It's not a destination. It's a dispensation. That's good. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Camilla says these tough lessons are changing our perspectives. Ingrid Ingram, good morning. Sylvia Gardner, Shook, if you're coming in from Shook, let me know you're here from the Shook Conference. That's our sweet family there in the Bronx. Hallelujah. We just met and fell in love. Shamika, let's go. Louisville, Kentucky. Yes. Hallelujah. Mary Ann Patterson, good morning. Just type in Shook. There's some Shook on IG. Let's go. Let's go. Oh, my God. Elder Nettie Johnson. Thank God for your precious life. Oh, God. Pentecost is not an event. It was not intended to be an event, but a dispensation of the release of God's power. Come on, Sophie, where I see you, Shug. Come on in, Joyce Tucker. He says, John chapter 14 and 12. He that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do, because I go to my father. And uh, if I go to my father, I will send back the power. I will send you the comforter, Apostle Blackwell. It's for your good that I go away. We're talking about Holy Spirit's power to transform your emotions. Holy Spirit's power to transform your emotions. Holy Spirit's power to transform your emotions. Stay with me on this one. Hey, Candy Clinks, they have more to good morning, family. <laughs> You, mommy and sister, love you all so much. Lori Battle, let's go. Yes, yes. Hallelujah. Mary Milton says that these lessons are helping me in every area of my life as I apply. Yes. Good morning, Elder Ladia. God bless you. Sylvia Spikes, Rhonda Dooley, Carolyn Gregory. I'm here now. Uh, we am on by the power of the Holy Ghost. Do you ever think about these scriptures and how it makes application to you? 
Tracy Reynolds Robinson, I hope you're enjoying your anniversaries. God bless. Annette Maliante, Lula Ward Brewer, Suge, praise God. Okay, that's good. <laughs> Kelly Williams, Adobo Oshkata. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit's power to transform my emotions. I I I I want it. I want to. I want to help us with this ideology, this construct that I have to live with discombobulated emotions, and I'm filled with the Holy Spirit. I, I want us. I want to challenge that. I want to. I want to challenge that. I, I want to challenge that, Gail Davis. Holy Spirit's power, the power of the Holy Ghost, the power of the Holy Ghost, the power of the Holy Ghost to transform my emotions. I, I don't believe that we, uh, Dr. J, have fully submitted to the construct that Christ has given us everything we need for life and godliness through the power of his spirit. Now the blood of Jesus takes away our sin, but the blood of Jesus won't help you with your emotions. Come on, somebody. I know you're not gonna like that. Apostle Roberts, Apostle Sonia Blackwell. Good morning, Teresa Wallace. I need you to hear me. The blood of Jesus will and does have the power to take away the sins of the world. But you're pleading the blood over your feelings. Come on, that, that's not the application of the blood. Overseer Lenita Jenkins. I need you to hear what I'm saying, Janine Daly. Good morning, Pastor. Felicia, listen. Holy Spirit, Holy Ghost. Can we can we can we go deep Pentecostal today? Holy Ghost has the power to transform our emotions. I'm loud this morning. That's the Tawana Hunter Stallworth, Sharon Bostic, Laurie Pace. That's not how that works. I'm just bleeding the blood. No, that's not how that works. It's not how that works. We, we, we've got to allow Holy Spirit to reorder, recalibrate our emotions. Your emotions, especially after a test, especially Regina Adams, especially after a challenge in life. Kimberly, come on, somebody. It's not how it works. You, you need help, Pastor Ron, with your emotional life. Why have we left our emotional life dangling as if Holy Spirit does not have the power to transform our emotions why do we leave our emotions out and try to submit all that uh, 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 our bodies try to submit our spirit and our emotions is out there dangling <laughs> our emotional life is very important to holy spirit very important because our emotional life driven by thoughts and here's the ideology of the church and i said this before the church is not a hospital i know that's what you all have heard and i know some of you have even said it and more of you have believed it oh that's not true. That's not, that's not the intent of the church. The church is not a hospital. 
Thank you, Anisha. She says, I used to say I'm a Pisces. I just do everything according to how I feel. I just thought I was soft and a crybaby. <laughs> all this time, all this time, all this time, the church is not a hospital. The church is a hospital. No, it's not. The church is a military training center for soldier equipment to raise up people to do war, to fight, to develop you in your character, to develop you, to give you all you need to live godly in this present age. Who wants to be in a hospital for the rest of your life? The church stop saying that. Now, if 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 we if we frame the church in that in that construct, then we simply give ourselves permission to have unhealed areas because that's what the hospital is for. For people who have chronic illnesses, who need immediate surgery, ur uh, urgent care, emergency, you know, all of this, uh, all of these different departments within the hospital. But basically it's for people who are not well, people who are going through, you know, of course you go in and have a baby, all of these different spaces. But for the most part, the, the intent of the hospital is to care for sick folk. Do you realize that in the priesthood, you couldn't be sick? You couldn't be lame? You couldn't be maimed? Have you noticed that the way Jesus chose his disciples was based on their productivity level? Somebody write that down. Jesus chose disciples based on their productivity level. He didn't choose anybody maimed or lame or broke. Now, he healed them, but he did not choose them to build this new kingdom era, to, to build them. Oh, come on, come on, come on. Ooh, shut up. And so I have to change your ideology of the church. I have to change your ideology of the church. Your the church, we're not, we're just physicians. No, we are apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers, gifts of gifts of helps, gifts of administration, gifts of the spirit. We, we have gifts of mercy, gifts of giving, gifts of uh, encouragement, gifts of leadership. Where, where is the where is the sickness? Where where is there room for people who are languishing, who are unhealed, who are bleeding, and who who are toxic and and oozing out the pus of life on others? No, no, Jesus healed them and made them whole. He chose disciples based on their productivity ability, their productivity level. He did not go to one hospital and choose a disciple. He did not go to uh, the, the invalids or the hospice or the prison. He did not. He chose people who were productive. The women that were productive, he chose women disciples that were productive, already prospering, already working, already with the ideas of work and ethics. This, 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 the priest couldn't be sick. No priest was ever selected crippled 
maimed, blind. Listen to me. Listen to me. This, I need you to understand. Some of you are saying, I want God to use me, but you're, you're not healed. You're not healed. And when you go into the military, uh, they look for chronic illnesses. They look for, listen, you haven't, can you imagine a blind sniper? Can you imagine a crippled Marine? Can you imagine a person who is driving a submarine down in the water? My chief is here who, who, who can't, can't see clearly, fogged out by trauma and triggers. Listen, listen, but you have put this imagery around the church of Jesus Christ and you have given nothing to the Holy Spirit to transform and to recalibrate, to convert. Yes, I came to Jesus like that. I came to Pentecost like that, but I didn't leave the upper room broken. I didn't leave the upper room uh, discombobulated emotionally, still angry, still holding grudges, still limping, still blind in one eye, sitting in a pool of grief forever. That's not the power of Holy Spirit. That's not the power of God. That's not the power for the kingdom of God. <laughs> I, I remember uh, when the girls, uh, their dad, Pastor Alfred, uh, he has a stutter. And when they found out that, that he had a flat, flat feet and he, and he had a, a hernia, listen to me, listen. And initially when he went in, he was young, buck, 18 years old. This was through Vietnam. And they were, they were pulling our young men in to go. And when he first uh, went in, he was a 1A caliber. Good morning, Pastor. <laughs> he was a 1A. Good morning, uh, Sister Yvonne Johnson Brock. Let's go, Bishop Brenda English, your grace. And when he came back from the physical, they had to reorder his status. He went from a 1A to a 4F. Now we were shouting because that meant he didn't have to go to Vietnam. We thought God had moved. But the reality is he was unfit for duty because of the stutter because of the flat foot and because of the hernia. Are you listening to me? Ooh, are you listening to me? Are you listening to me? And, and so the military has standards. Mental health, you can't get in there. You, you're handling weapons. You're handling live ammunition. You are handling people. You are, you, your leadership must be clear. Your productivity level must excel. But then you want to bring the broken and the wounded and the damaged to God. And you want them to stay like that. Not even the sacrifice that of the old covenant required for daily worship could have spots or blemishes. Maimed. It couldn't be maimed in any way. There could not be anything that 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 disturbed or disrupts your life so that you are unavailable. You are not fit for the master's use. We come to Christ like this. We come to God like this. We enter into the Pentecostal experience like this. But does not the power of Holy Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead, don't you expect more from the power that raised Jesus from the dead? 
than you to be maimed and lame and wounded and derelict of duty? Don't you have a greater expectation for that? Okay. I didn't got I didn't, I didn't, I didn't got excited. I didn't got excited. But if you create a context for people, a culture where people can be sick forever, maintenance forever, never healed, never delivered. Yes, you went through it. Yes, it was absolutely horrific. Yes, you were broken. Yes, we made mistakes. Yes, we've been disappointed. All of those things are true. But when do I allow Holy Spirit access to my emotions? When do I allow Holy Spirit access to my emotions? How long will I languish? How long will I be unhealthy under the guise of I'm a believer, but I've been through something. I'm a believer, but I got hurt. I'm a believer, but I, what in the world? You've never seen a crippled soldier. You've never, when they, when you get injured, they take you off the field. They take you off the field. They take you to the infirmary because you can't fight wounded. You are you can you are you are a a liability to the rest of the soldiers. So your team must move you off the field and get you to the infirmary. Who am I talking to? When will you say, I need Holy Ghost transformation of my emotions? And some of you have believed a lie. Some of you say, you say certain things and I'll always check if they no, that's not true. Because if you never dismantle these lies that you believe, then you'll always carry some woundedness. You'll always use your woundedness, your trauma stories, your injuries to prevent yourself from becoming mature and prevent others from holding you accountable. Shout out. When will you say, Holy Ghost, transform my emotions when will you give the power of holy spirit access to your emotions why do you always refer back to that i came out of this i came why do you why why do you keep why is that still your point of reference You've got to know that's not healthy. Why is your past previous life your point of reference? Well, you know, I came out of this. You know, I was raped when I was young. You know, this happened to me. You know, why is that still your point of reference? Why is that? You have to ask yourself the questions uh, like we do in in, in the hospital, you have to ask yourself the questions that triage you so that you can be well. Tr you have to triage yourself. Why do I say that? Why do I say that I was this? Why do I say that that happened to me? Where does that come from? And how is that shaping? How is that shaping me? What kind of triggers? Why am I, why don't I trust men? Why don't I trust God? Why don't I trust relationships? Oh, y'all not saying that. Why do you do that? Why is that your points of reference? Do you are you advertising? What are you doing? <laughs> oh my God. Oh my God. You gotta find out. God, am I healed? 
Holy Spirit, am I healed? Am I speaking? Am I speaking about this from the perspective that I'm healed? Or am I using this as a defense? What, what really is going on in my emotions? Oh, Rabbi Kashkatama, Holy Spirit's power to transform our emotions. This is an inside job. This is an inside work. Now, your healthy emotions will focus on the wonders of Christ. Your healthy emotions will always focus on the wonders of Christ. It is those emotions, however, that are not healthy, that are not rightly ordered, that always will be the object of your weaknesses, your area where you are not healthy, the area that you are not fully developed emotionally. Come on now. Yeah, you got to ask yourself, why, why is this? Why is this? You know, there are certain things that um, I don't allow people to keep talking about. You know, if you give your testimony once or twice and you still testify, you're not testifying no more. You're advertising. You're advertising because you're not free. You're not free. You're not, you're not fully developed. Let's go back to John chapter number 12. Get your paper Bibles. Get your paper Bible. Get your paper Bible. Hallelujah. Let's go back to, to the death of Lazarus. Let's just go back to that. And I want you to understand that everything in hell is fighting you from your freedom yeah yo, i know the difference between a testimony and a, and a commercial <laughs> oh rabbi kashkataba i know the difference between a a testimony i'm delivered i'm delivered and a commercial <laughs> oh rabbi kashkataba why are your feelings still so strongly attached to these past traumas. Why is that? Why is this governing even my ministry? Why is this governing uh, my desire to be used in the ministry? Why is this a part of me at all? Why is this still something that I want people to relate to? Why do I even want people to know? Why do I, if you listen to people talk, you'll find out where they really are not healed. You'll find out, you find out that people are not as healed as they try to say they are. All right, let's go this. So John 11, and we talked a little bit about this uh, in terms of how do you come out of your trauma? How did you come out of the test? How did you emerge out of the test? I will not accept any excuses for the fact that you are not healed. I won't, I won't do it. And the reason is because the power of Holy Spirit, the power of the Holy Ghost. I, I can't see Holy Spirit leaving you in worse shape than he found you. I don't believe that. And, and, and this is a deep dive. This is a deep dive. I, I realize what is the root of that deception? What is the root of the lie? Where, where does the lie come from? <laughs> uh, 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 uh. Come on, Wanisha. She said, I keep being asked to tell my story about domestic violence, but I'm tired of telling that story. Absolutely. 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 Because you re-injure yourself. Why, why, why is that your story? I'm just telling you, these are things that we must, we, we, we've got to confront. But again, if we dismantle, the, if we deconstruct this idea 
that the church is a hospital, if we deconstruct that, if we dismantle that, I believe we can be, we can begin to preach different kinds of theologies. We, we can preach different. I don't like these sermons that always, it's not theologically sound to always cater to the feelings. It's not, we have to preach higher. Share, we have to preach to the truth. We preach to the truth. We don't preach to the weakness and the feelings. We preach to the power of the Holy Ghost. We preach to the power of Christ. We preach to the power of scripture. We preach to the power of deliverance. Holy Spirit is not going to mismanage our lives. Holy Spirit is not going to mismanage us, but we have to submit ourselves, our faulty thinking about ministry, our faulty thinking about preaching, our faulty thinking about scripture, our faulty thinking. Glory to my gosh, we, we're preaching to emotions. We're preaching to sicknesses and, and, and willful disobedience. No, you have to preach from the theological value of Christ, the theological value of being filled with the Holy Ghost. Kathy, good morning, baby. We have to preach to the theological power to deliver people. These, these, these messages that, that ooze with emotional consolation do not bring deliverance. Then you, are, she just hard. No, that's not theological truth. It's not the, theological truth. We're not pre, well, she doesn't walk in love. I walk in truth. You have to, if you want people to be delivered, you have to preach the truth because when we know the truth, the truth will make us free. And I, I know some of you have mercy gifts. I get it. But in mercy, you must still preach truth. Sound doctrine is almost a, 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 uh, it's almost, um, what I want to say, <laughs> you can't hardly find sound doctrine. These emotional sermons that tune people up and make people shout and make people run, but no truth that says you can be free. You can have, you can, you can live better. You don't have to stay in the shape you're in. You don't have to. The, the, the theological doctrine, sound doctrine has vanished. Thank you, Camilla. We don't, we preach emotional messages because the preacher is not well. Okay, let me not go there. Let me not go there. Let me not go there. Listen to this. I want you to hear this conversation. Verse 21 of, of John 11. Lord Martha said to Jesus, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But I know that even now God will give you whatever you ask. And listen to verse 23. And Jesus said, your brother will rise again. And Martha answered, I know. And he will rise again in the resurrection at the last day. And Jesus says, I am the resurrection. Listen to this. <laughs> John Andrew Hart. <laughs> Come on, Teresa Wallace. Come on. Preach the solution. Preach the doctrinal truth of Christ. Preach the power of the Holy Ghost. Stop. That's why some of y'all don't like the New Testament. Y'all keep going to the Old Testament because the narratives and the stories of the pain and the traumas without Christ, the stories, the narratives uh, that 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 lend itself to uh, these emotional sermons that you preach. Uh, the, 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 that's why a lot of you like the Old Testament. <laughs> 
uh, because it, it helps you to, to, it lends itself to the stories and the narratives, whereas the New Testament gives you solutions and applications. But we keep preaching Daniel in the lions and we keep preaching Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. We keep preaching the woundedness, the trauma, the rape, the violation, the woman is all these ide ideologies, uh, liberation theology, uh, womanist theology, feminist theology, all of these theologies that cater to trauma, that cater itself to victimization, that cater itself uh, to people not being fully well. So when you come out of the old, uh, Margie, and you come over into the new wilderness and bondage stories, that's why some of you are like that. You, I said to one, one young preacher uh, the other day, I said, stop preaching from the old. Give yourself about three years and just preach from the new. Why? I said, give yourself about three years and stop pulling up scripture from the Old Testament. Because all you're doing is catering to, to the trauma and the wilderness and, and the devastation and the losses. We have come past that. We are in the new covenant. Five, five, oh, and so you keep people in their feelings. You never preach them to truth. You never preach them to accountability. You never preach them to the responsibility that they have to submit their emotions and their issues to God for deliverance, not for maintenance, but for deliverance. Ooh, We're in a new covenant. <laughs> uh -uh. I said, just give yourself three years and don't preach anything out of the Old Testament. Come on, because because it, it caters, it, it makes a good story. It, it makes a good story, but it leaves the people in the pew hurting. It leaves the people in the pew wandering. It leaves the people in the pew feeling justified for not being delivered. <laughs> Ooh, come on, Pastor Cynthia Brown. Y'all not saying nothing. <laughs> Ooh, Rabbi, I'm listening to this conversation between Martha and Jesus. I'm, li I'm listening to this conversation. <laughs> ah, yes, 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 yes. Uh, between Martha and Jesus. And as good as Martha and Jesus, as well as they knew each other, Martha was not, uh, she still wasn't uh, really perceiving and, and, and discerning what Jesus was really saying. Jesus says, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live, even though they die. And whoever lives by believing in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said, yes, Lord, I believe that you are the son of God who is coming to the world. And after this, she went back. She called Mary. She said, the teacher is here. He's asking for you. And Mary, who had been seated, seated at the house, Mary, who had been calm, Mary, who had, who had never ran out emotionally in the setting. Uh, she gets up now. She goes to meet him in the village. And when the Jews who had been with Mary in the house comforting her noticed how quickly she got up and went out, they followed her, supposing as she was going to the tomb to mourn there. But when Mary reached the place where Jesus was and saw him, she worshiped. She fell at his feet and worshiped. Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. And when Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews had come along with her were weeping, he was deeply moved in the spirit and trouble. Where have you laid him? Come and see, Lord, they replied. And Jesus wept. Wow, wow, wow. And the Jews said, see how he loved him. But some of them said, could not the man who opened the eyes of the blind have kept this man from dying? Verse 38, and Jesus once more deeply moved, came to the tomb. It was a cave with a stone laid across the entrance. Take away the stone, verse 39. But Lord, said Martha, the sister of the dead man, by this time, there is a bad odor. I want to talk about that right there. For he has been there four days. Wow. Wow. 
I want I want that to get in. I want I want that to get down in you. This situation has lasted so long that now there is a bad odor. Ooh, Shanda Bohoshkata. Ooh, come on, Rita Swain. Come on, IG. Y'all, y'all out there. I'm going deep today. I'm going deep today. I'm going into a place. I'm going into a place. I want you to hear what I'm saying. I'm talking to bishops, apostles, prophets. I'm talking to co-pastors. I'm talk. Listen to me carefully. We have kept our illness so long. Apostle Bishop Frederick LaGrange Huff, God bless you. Listen to me. <laughs> Thank you, Bishop. Listen to me carefully. You can't blame it on your temperament. You can't blame it on your upbringing. You, you have been in this state emotionally so long. I want you to hear these conversations. You know, when we read the text, I don't read the text to preach. I read the text to see these conversations. Where are these conversations going? Where are these conversations going? I listen to this and I, I just say, Lord have mercy, temple of prayer. I, 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 I listen. Where, where is this? And I, and I, and I, and I understand. I, I'm, I'm watching, a, I'm watching some, some things that I, I might have to speak to. Uh, I, I understand death and dying. I, I get it. I've been in ministry 51 years. I get it. But you can't keep, if you keep it too long, it will stink. That's why even in the old covenant, they gave you a time limit to grief, 90 days, 30 days. Sometimes God said, don't even cry. I'm, I'm going to get into this whole issue of death and dying and why the church is so unhealthy when it comes to death and dying. I, I, I'm going to get into that. I'm going to, but I want to get into this conversation with Martha and Mary and Jesus. And not, not just, come on over, see, right? Not just the fact that Lazarus got up. I want you to hear the conversations. And, and, and you can hear the, you can hear the tug. You can hear the pull between the emotions and the resurrect. You can hear, you can hear the tension. Come on, Pope Cope. You can hear the tension between the, those that are walking in the spirit, walking in the flesh, and where Jesus was. Jesus wasn't where they were. And he kept trying to bring them where he was. Listen to the conversations. Sometimes we miss the conversation trying to get a sermon. Trying to get to the close. Let's just hear the conversations. Since I want you to hear this. He says, show me where you laid in. You got that. Move the stone. And at this point now, at this language said, Lord, by this time he has a bad odor. Remember that the Jews don't, do not embalm. Remember that the Jews do not embalm. <laughs> Listen to the conversation. Those of you that are in ministry or any level, don't use the, the scripture just to find a, a, a script for your messages. Listen to the conversations listen to the struggle and 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 the and the war the challenge Martha was having 
the challenge that, that Mary was having, the challenge that Jesus was having here. And listen to what he said. Listen to what Jesus says. Did I, didn't I tell you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God? Wow. When, when we hang on to emotional baggage, when we hang on to emotional baggage too long, there is an odor. Oh, you laugh and you, you know, you try to cover it up with collars and vestments and we try to cover it up with things. We, we, we try to massage it. We try to manage it. We, we try to, to, to make it fit the paradigm of Pentecost. We try to allow, you know, it to, you know, kind of be accepted. We want it to be accepted as normal. It's not normal. And, and here's the thing. When, when that odor is there, when that, when, when that odor is there, you are not able to smell it because it's your odor. It's you, you are, you are, you are accustomed to it. You are comfortable with it. Martha says, now wait, <laughs> some of you, you don't even realize that the, um, the unhealed emotions carry an odor. I, you, you, you're trying to, you, you know, you're trying to make it anointing and you're trying to make it, you know, ministry applicable and you try yeah you're trying to give it a nice name you start these ministries <laughs> you know that that uh cater to uh unhealed people and and and, and others can smell your odor and, and and it grieves holy spirit it grieves holy spirit that we do not give him access to that. This is why Jesus said, you got to move the stone. You, you've got to move the stone. You, you've got to move. I'm not going to move the stone. Show me where you laid it. But you've got to move the stone. And, 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 Listen, Martha started fighting that thing. She said, wait now, I want you to heal him, but you want me to move the stone? You want me to take some responsibility in this? You want me to have some ownership in this? Wait, 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 wait now, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> wait now, wait, wait. <laughs> but they did that. You got to move that stone. You, listen, Jesus says, I'm the resurrection. I'm not the stone mover. I know what I'm going to do. Your brother's going to live if you believe. You're going to see the glory of God. But I'm going to need you to participate in this. See, this construct of the church being a hospital has ruined us because it has removed our responsibility to participate with Holy Spirit in our deliverance. It, it, it has, you have to engage Holy Spirit, if you want to be healed, it's not magic. It's not, it's not, it's not by, by whoever can that. No, you're going to have to take some ownership. You're going to have to move. You're going, oh, shikata. Woo, rabakanda, rabo, oh, shikata, 
Woo, God, listen to me, listen to me. My time is up. I got to go, I got to go. It stinks. So I don't want to touch it. I, it stinks. I want you to fix it. It stinks. Are you sure you really want to? You really want it? It's not. It's not healthy. I know. But if you want deliverance, you have to be involved by the power of the Holy Spirit. You have to be involved. I was broken as a child. I don't trust men. I don't trust women. I think everybody's out to get me. I don't, I church hurt. I got hurt in the church. I got hurt in my marriage. I got hurt. And so now, but, but by now it smells. The odor of it is, is demanding your attention. And you're trying to preach with this. You're trying to live with this. You're trying to be married with this. You're, try, you're trying to work in the marketplace with all this stuff and everybody around you has, has, has talked about this odor that you carry. It stinks, folks. You carry it. And these ministries that you all are building on the funk is an atrocity in the body of Christ. It's, it, 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 is, it is horrific to think that you would preach me sick rather than preach me free. It's an atrocity that you are building ministries for the hurting. It's, it, it is an atrocity that your own funk is the basis of your theology. It is awful that now your funk becomes your sermons, your message. Why? Why would you? Because, because this ideology that the church is a hospital. And it's not. It's a military training center. And the Bible says that no soldier who engages in this army should be entangled with the affairs of this life. Something's wrong with our theology, folks. Something's wrong with the way we read the Bible. Something is wrong with the way that we approach ministry. We don't want to move the stone. We don't want responsibility. And we don't Trust the power of Holy Spirit with our emotions. So we, we languish. We hang out in it long, too long until there is an odor. And then we want to drag our healing out. We want to drag it out. We want to drag it out over years. We want to drag it out. I mean, I got to hear 50 sermons about, and you got to drag it out. Now we got to drag it out because you don't trust the power of the Holy Ghost with your emotions. And somewhere you think that being dysfunctional is the will of God for your life. It is not. And I will not. Be silent about it. We must become fit for the master's use. I got it going. Ooh, shataba. Handi di osha. Re ba 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 mandi osha. Glory to Yahshay. Share this on your page. Ooh, she na 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 si kaba. Re ba kando raba ni ashika. Oh God, oh God, forgive us. Oh, 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 we're going to get down into these abandonment issues, these rejection issues, these trauma issues, these violation issues, these grief, death, and die issues. We're going to get down in it until every yoke of bondage has been destroyed by the power of the Holy Ghost. That's, that's, that's the will of God for you. I got to. I, I got to get out of here, y'all. Oh my God. Oh my God. Whoa, Shatanada. 
Come on. Don't miss this week. Don't miss it. Holy Spirit, Holy Ghost power to transform your emotions and give you the victory in every area of your life. 